Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in crypto and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, just as the thumbnail suggests, uh, we are just getting started. And uh, as I've said before many times, I think Q4 is going to be just fireworks. And we're gonna go over uh, why that's going on right now, what's leading to mass adoption, and what we can actually look forward to. So first thing we're doing is we're gonna do a new segment, it's called market data. We're gonna take a look at uh, price and price history, also some on-chain analysis. We're gonna get into uh, Kevin O'Leary and why Kevin O'Leary is actually important for this space, why Kevin as I call it. Also we're gonna talk about how gold and crypto is not leaving in any way, shape or form. Also we'll take a look at uh, talking about front running as far as Ethereum and NFTs, and also clipped crypto clarity and how it's actually coming along and what's going on. So we'll get into all those things, but first take a look at what's going on into the market data. So I wanna do something new. I mean, we always talk about uh, the market data itself. We talk about the price action, which is just a very small part. And uh, market cap today is 2.31 trillion. I think uh, yesterday we were we were down like 200 billion. All of a sudden, bang, 200 billion just comes about. No big deal. Uh, we call that a Wednesday. So uh, we've also got that Bitcoin daily sentiment. They're using trade the chain, trade the chain analysis. You know, they uh, scrape all the interwebs and all the blog posts, and they have a direct API integration, all that great stuff. So you can kind of tell where things are going. Link in the description if you want to check out trade the chain. But we're looking at 70 out of 100, which is pretty darn bullish. And the coins themselves. I mean, look, Bitcoin's up, it's almost 55,000, and it's up uh, 10% in 24 hours. That's pretty great for the biggest market cap as far as the cryptocurrency market itself. Ethereum is at $3,600 almost. Uh, Binance coin, 438. Cardano's up a little bit, 1%. Uh, Tell you, nobody cares. XRP, watch out, 2.4%. Dogecoin, 1%, just because Mark Cuban says that uh, he might be using it more in his shop. Ugh, okay. And then Polkadot. Look, I got nothing against uh, 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 Dogecoin or Shiba Inu, one of the meme coins. If you're making money, great, good for you. Uh, let's see how if they're going to be here in the next 10 years. And then uh, everything else just pretty much up uh, across the board. So we're looking pretty good. And then that's just the first part. What I really want to get into and start to, and I'm going to ask you, what you think about this, link this uh, or talk to me in the comment section, is uh, things like this. So this is the total liquidations because when you go up 10%, when you have those things, you know, you're going to get uh, the shorts get squeezed and you get uh, big price action and here we are. So total liquidation 6.17 in the past 24 hours, it looks like, uh, ooh, uh, bummer, 95,000 plus traders were liquidated. And uh, here's all the tokens that were. And you can take a look at uh, down here. This is on bybt.com. And out of all the uh, exchanges, Binance had the most, 53% and 68% of those were short and they got liquidated like crazy. 83%, uh, all these things uh, down here. So that is what is going on as far as like who got wrecked and how much. Also the single largest single liquidation order happened on Huobi for about $11 million. Uh, very sorry for those individuals, but that is what we have. And then I want to take a look at how much as far as uh, is going on as for shorts and longs in each individual uh, crypto uh, exchange. So here's the stats, uh, BitMEX, Binance, whatever else. And this is over the last 24 hours, but what I want to show you is that sentiment really does drive the market. I think when you see a lot of people getting sh uh, liquidated, well, guess what happens? This is a period of 24 hours and you got shorts versus longs. Pretty even, right? Greens are the longs. Reds of the shorts. Well, let's just back that up and take a look at the last 12 hours. Well, not too much of a change, but what happens at four hours? A little bit of a, a, a change here over one hour, then we got a little bit less, and then 30 minutes, all of a sudden, now people are like, wow, I think I'm gonna not short Bitcoin, and then here we go on most of them. But uh, it just depends on uh, which one it is, but you got 58%, 45%, 73% on dairy bit. Ah, uh, well, 74% of BitMEX, 48 and 51, yeah, sure, 47 and 52. I would, I would love to see how those shorts uh, ring out. Uh, that's, that's funny. <laughs> I'd love to see how those shorts ring out. I would love to see how those shorts actually get uh, as far as like in time goes. And then lastly, we'll take a look at uh, some on-chain analysis as far as all miners outflow, meaning how many of these miners are actually selling. And the more that the miners sell, yeah, usually that means uh, more of a dip in price. And uh, we can see here, it's not like too many, but there is a little bit of an increase as you can see right here, as far as like 4th of October. And then as far as the reserves, meaning how much Bitcoin is on all the exchanges, we can see here that uh, once the uh, reserve starts to drop, 
Well, that means that the uh, supply is going down, but the demand still stays the same or increases and the price goes up. And now look where we're at right now. We are pretty darn low. So the uh, amount of Bitcoin on exchanges are going down because people are snatching them up, which means the price goes up. And look at Ethereum. It's even more pronounced on Ethereum. Look at that from the left side or the right side. There's just not a lot of Ethereum. So that's what's uh, going on as far as uh, the market data. Let me know what you think about that new segment. Let's move on to our next piece, which talks about why Kevin. So this one here, first of all, Kevin O'Leary. I think uh, most of us know this guy. He is uh, one of the uh, Shark Tank members. And uh, he said, hey, my crypto exposure is greater than gold for the first time ever. So the real question you have to ask yourself is why does Rob care what Kevin O'Leary says? Well, it's not that I really care about what Kevin O'Leary says. Pretty smart business guy. But as far as crypto, eh, what I care about is the reach that Kevin gives us and also the demographic that Kevin gives us. And I hate to to point it out, but Kevin's an older guy. He's a distinguished gentleman here at 67 years. Why do I bring that up? Because Kevin is a boomer. And I know on uh, mostly in the crypto community, we make fun of boomers for some reason. I don't understand why. Uh, because uh, Kevin here is a boomer. Good for him, whatever else. But boomers, if you don't know, carry a boatload of wealth. So when we take a look at this and uh, we're like, ah, you're a boomer. Well, guess what? Baby boomers in America, uh, hold the vast majority of the wealth in the nation. Now, people will say, ah, but you know, the baby boomers, uh, you know, it's going to be a, a, a wealth shift. That's true, but it ain't happening tomorrow. So show a little respect. So baby boomers have a ton of money. Gen Xers have, uh, they're in the second place. Millennials, eh, not so much. So why do I care what Kevin says? Because he's got reach, man. He's got reach. So this is what's going on. Uh, Kevin says he hopes to increase his crypto allocation to 7% in the next few months. He says, I don't see a situation where crypto's ever going away. And we'll get to that in a second. He says, uh, at the end of the year, I'm hoping to uh, be at 7% of our operating company's portfolio in crypto. I'm investing in a wide range of different crypto products as a strategy. And then to finish up, he states, nothing's going to replace gold. So I know that we're all hot and bothered about how great crypto is. But you can understand, I don't think gold's going anywhere either. And I think Kevin's right here. He says, gold has been tried and proven for 2,000 years. The Romans were hoarding it. I think what happens is gold will remain an asset class in portfolios like mine and others as a property. And that's really what it comes down to. So when Kevin here is talking about this, this uh, these are the types of stories and comments and publications that people are going to get into because they're like, you know what? I don't really know about cryptocurrency, but I know Kevin's a pretty smart business guy, and I like what he says in Shark Tank, and that's reach over millions of people. I'm also a boomer. Maybe I should get into that, and that's where we get the funding, or that's where we get more people getting into our space. I think this is a very big tent, and we should allow all types of people to come in, uh, especially if they want to be a part of it. I welcome you with open arms, which leads me to my next point. So if we're talking about crypto, we got to talk about gold. And just like Kevin said, gold and crypto is not leaving. And about this whole thing about gold and crypto is that if you look at gold, first of all, I own gold. I own silver. I never understood why the gold bugs were like, you got to only have gold and that's about it. And metals are awesome and you suck. I don't understand it. I think that there's room for everybody to buy everything. Why wouldn't you diversify just a little bit into these different assets? And I don't want to go over the debate. But I want to do point this out, and that is that this, this is a 10-year history chart of spot gold prices. And uh, in 2011, or before 2012, you were looking at a, a whopping uh, price of $1,800. It's pretty good for gold. And then over the last 10 years, you didn't do anything. I mean, you went up a little bit. You went from $1,800 to, what is this, $2,000 in a decade? Are you kidding me? So look, it's a great store of value, but if you're trying to get wealthy, investment opinion, not investment advice. I don't think gold is your play. And all those people who are telling you that gold's the only way to go, you understand, they own a boatload of gold and they want you to invest into it because guess what? They are mega rich and want you to be there. So that is just my opinion uh, of what's going on. However, I will say stress, I cannot stress this enough. I own it myself because I do think it's gonna be around for a long time, just like cryptocurrency. And don't take my word for it. Take the word of the Bank of America. Again, why does Rob care what Bank of America says? It's because for some reason, some people look at these old institutions and are like, you know, 
I kind of have a, a feeling that these guys uh, are trustworthy. They're not. But it's good when the when Bank of America comes out and says, hey, these are too large to ignore. And we actually covered this yesterday. And uh, this is a, just a quick snippet. Bank of America's global research has begun covering crypto, debuting with a report saying that digital assets are too large to ignore. Man, maybe they can get into uh, uh, Netflix next if they're just cutting edge. Anyhow, Candace Browning, head of Bank of America Global Research states, if you look at the number of corporates mentioning crypto on their earning calls, that's gone from about 17 last year to 147 in just this quarter. And uh, when you take a look at things and we're looking at mass adoption and who is putting on the balance sheet and how things are going, these are just the big indicators of what is going on. So we've got all that happening in tandem, right? And that's good. Now it's time to look out for us because if you're already here, you're probably way out of the curve. I can guarantee you front ran all the banks and all the big hedge funds if, you, if, if you're already here because they're just getting into it uh, uh, too. So the next thing is you might want to look at Ethereum, NFTs, and not like Ethereum is any, any, any great thing, but the different products that are built on it and as far as NFTs and why they're so important. So I'm going to try to break this down as quickly as I can, and hopefully it makes a little bit of sense. First of all, Ethereum, I thought the big uh, news or the big reason why Ethereum is going up was because of all the NFTs. Well, it's really not. If we take a look at this uh, this chart right here, I actually stole this from, uh, from Guy over at Coin Bureau. Thanks, Guy. And uh, it talks about how Ethereum settles 6.2 trillion in transactions in the last 12 months. But you can see here, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 20 was a pretty good year. But look at this, almost a 400% increase. And you see that light blue area right here? I was like, oh, that must be NFTs. It's not. You know what that is? That's stable coins on Ethereum. Stable coins. The rest of it is all the different transactions, including NFTs. So when, we talk, when Gary Gensler of the SEC says that stable coins are the poker chips, of cryptocurrencies, digital assets, he might be right. Because if people want to get into the market, a lot of times they want to put things into stable coins and that's where a lot of the value is locked up. And I think that is why the governments are looking at that, especially agencies like the SEC, which we'll get into in just a second. And also, I just want to say that, let's say this, if you're looking for the next big thing, potentially, uh, it could be NFTs, and I never really underst I understood NFTs and what the whole thinking behind them was. Of course, you can claim you know your, your property essentially. You can claim it as art. You can claim it as uh, real estate. You can claim it as a patent or whatever else. It's a non fungible token. Great, but when I saw this, it kind of made a little bit more sense. So I'm going to play two snippets. One is like six seconds, and the other one is like thirty seconds. Just check this out. Metaverse, NFT, virtual reality. The first edition of Digital Art Fair Asia shows a new Hong Kong buildings. So in the photography section, we sell NFTs, which are available on this screen. You have to scan the QR code and it takes you to Refinable's website. There you pay in Ethereum and you have to have a wallet. Um, this is a new way of purchasing artwork. And okay, great. Fascinating. Why did I just show that to you? It's because this is just a new way. It's not so much a, a, a new way of paying for things, but imagine this. If you're an artist, right? Let's say this painting behind me, right? You paint this picture and uh, you're like, you sell it for, I don't know, $1 million. I don't know what it is. And uh, all of a sudden you're like, well, now I gotta make a new painting. Well, wouldn't it be a lot easier if you're an artist just to say, hey, you know what you wanna, you can't get the physical copy, but you can prove that you have the digital copy by buying it here, scanning this barcode, it's on the blockchain, it is immutable, you can prove it in any way, shape, or form, and I'm gonna sell 20 of these for $100,000 a piece. Well, now you got a whole piece of that. You're like, well, who would do that? Who would pay for that? A lot of people would pay for that, actually. And then also, if you take a look at, it's all about the community. So when you have these communities that kind of come together, and they're all behind one thing, like a, a, a uh, board yacht club and uh, crypto punks and things like that. You are involved in this community, which brings everything together and it becomes tokenized. So it doesn't make a lot of sense. I, I know a little bit in, in certain ways, but if you take a look at the next great thing, of course, NFTs, I think could be a very big place, which leads me to my next point and last point, which is about clarity. So if we're looking at crypto clarity with what Gensler just talked about, poker chips and things and whatnot, I think this is one of the big reasons why we've seen a little bit of an upswing in the last couple of days or so. And it kind of comes down to this. 
SEC, SEC Chair Gensler. In a Tuesday hearing, Gensler told the House Committee on Financial Services that the SEC has no plans to ban crypto. I want you to listen to what he says here because I don't want you just to take my word for it or just what Coindesk writes. I want you to take it from the proverbial horse's mouth. So just take a listen to this. The financial stability issues that stable coins could raise as well. But no bans that you're interested in implementing via the SEC, uh, as China has done, really to funnel everyone through uh, their own digital currency. No, I, I mean I, that would be up to Congress. I mean, what we what we're really working with with uh, the the authorities you've given us, and I've said this. I think that that many of these tokens, uh, uh, and it's based on the facts and circumstances, but many of these tokens do meet the tests of uh, being an investment contract or a note or some other form of, of security that we bring them within the investor protection uh, remit of the SEC. Great, so there you go. So I think that uh, what we have here is just people are able to exhale just a little bit because honestly, I thought people, I think people were thinking that uh, Gary here was trying to just uh, put the kibosh on all of the crypto and digital assets out there and uh, just pretty much ban them, which, I mean, let's be honest, uh, at this point, near impossible. That would mean that all the governments in all the world would have to get together in one place and say, hey, it's time for us to ban cryptocurrencies as a unit, as a global community and do that. Are you kidding me? We can't even get these people to talk to each other. There's no way that's gonna happen. So uh, that is one relief. And then also, you've also got a little bit of uh, relief here with uh, Jerome Powell, head of uh, the uh, Federal Reserve Bank. And he's pretty much just saying, look, same type of thing, just take a listen. So Mr. Chairman, as a matter of policy, is it your intention to ban or limit the use of cryptocurrencies like we're seeing in China? No, and, and I, I immediately realized I would misspoken there. I didn't mean to, to take the word cryptocurrency out of that sentence. And, and I would say it's fairly widely understood that central bank digital currencies could perform some of the, some of the, uh, could make- uh, But no intention to ban. Less, uh, no intention no, to ban. No intention to ban them, but they're, you know, the, Stable coins are, are like money market funds, they're like bank deposits, but they're to some extent outside the regulatory perimeter and it's, it's appropriate that they be regulated. Same activity, same regulation. So there you go. I mean, you've got uh, two people with the heads of their respective departments pretty much saying, we're not here to ban crypto. And we're just gonna kind of play it as is. Their big sticking point is the stable coins. And I think they can all work through that. But it really just comes down to Congress and how they write the, the laws and the rules because the Howey test is from the 1930s. I think we need an updated version. And they're already talking about that right now. So as a collective sigh, everybody can say, great. Now we're not going to, we can move away from this, this uh, talking points of banning crypto and move into the next phase, which is how are we going to uh, maximize the usage and make this into a legit uh, business businesses or uh, asset class and uh, if we just take a look at everything we just talked about today I think this is what moves us into mass adoption this is perfect timing for Q4 2021 and I've always said October November December are going to be uh, fireworks and I, uh, I I mean you can't really put it any better than that now having said all that every time I think I know exactly what's going to happen in the market it does the exact opposite so uh, don't just take my advice, do your own research, take a look around, take a look at on-chain data, just get as much information as you possibly can and make a decision from there. But uh, for me, uh, I'm feeling pretty good today. Anyhow, so that is it for today. So if you stuck me all the way to the end, first of all, thanks, I appreciate it. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is very time sensitive and we do this every single day. So thanks so much, I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.